ho, ho. Merry Christmas. We're talking about all things Christmas in this show. We're talking about the trees and the balls and the bells and the candy canes and the candy cane houses. It's so easy when we're looking at everything that's involved in America's celebration of Christmas to forget what Christmas is really all about. The simple story of the Son of God who was born man so that we might be born again and have a relationship with the living God. Stay tuned as we're going to share with you tips on how to keep Christ the center of your Christmas this year. Does Christ really compete with Santa Claus? We don't think so. And I'm Jamie Shaver. I love Christmas. Uh, it's a wonderful time of year uh, where we can focus on Christ and, the, and the, me the true meaning of Christmas. I have 15 grandchildren, and one way that we try to keep uh, Christ at the center of our Christmas is through Christmas themes. Um, every year I have a new theme for Christmas, and it usually emerges out of one of my devotions uh, through the summer. And as I, you know, a verse pops out at me as something important to share with my grandchildren over Christmas, I begin to think about ways that we can integrate that theme into our Christmas. Uh, the first year we did a white Christmas and everyone got snowsuits and sleds and the men got uh, shovels uh, to sh shovel their snow. Uh, then the next year it went so well that uh, I decided to do the theme again and we did a theme called the Very Fishy Christmas. And we use the theme verse uh, uh, where the Bible tells us that uh, he wants us to be fishers of men. And so I blew up a gigantic uh, boat, fishing boat, in uh, the living room. And we opened presents in the fishing boat. And all the children got their own fishing poles and life vests and uh, sleeping bags. And uh, we did devotion around that scripture. Uh, the following year, I decided to do a treasure theme. And that came out of the verse, where your treasure is, there's where your heart is also. And so um, I gave each of the children a backpack that year. And inside the backpack was a map, a treasure map. And so the families had to put their heads together, each family, I have four uh, children in each of their families, put their maps together to try to find their treasure box. So there was a treasure box for each family and inside the treasure box, when they found it, were the things that they should treasure in life. There were pictures of, of family members, uh, each of them had their own Bible. There were some fun Christian videos in there for the children. And so this has been a tradition in our family for many years. Uh, the la uh, last year we did a running theme, and that was based in, in 1 Corinthians 9, where it talks about our life is like a race and we're running to win. And we all got jogging suits that year and water bottles. Welcome, we are talking about how to make your Christmas not magical but miraculous. And we have a great guest I'd like to welcome, Michelle Rice, who has spoken on this very topic to a number of different groups. And I know that you're gonna be blessed by this information. And as always, my great co-host, Julie, and our Bible scholar. So let's get started. How can you help people make Christmas more about the miraculous and not so much just magical? Like, what is, what is that? Well, I think there's a lot of ways that you can teach your kids or even your family about the traditions we already do in our homes and how they come from Christian roots. For example, a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree is a symbol of Christ, so that the point of the tree points towards Christ and the three points of the Christmas tree represent the Trinity and the stars on the Christmas tree represent the star in the east that led the shepherds to Christ. So that's one way to just talk about that symbol. So you're just taking like Christmas tradition right. and then mm -hmm. converting it to a Christmas or to a Jesus Christ focused 
story to exactly. help the children right. understand. And these are traditions we are already doing in our home, so just talking about why we have these traditions. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the stockings came from St. Nicholas, and I think you were going to talk about the history of before St. Nicholas well, came. Well, before St. Nick came in, in fact, it's funny that you'd even mention about the Christmas tree because there are some people that even don't like to celebrate Christmas at all because they consider it a pagan holiday. And um, the way that we even arrived at December 25th to be the date on which we celebrate Christmas is there was a Christian historian from Rome and he had calculated based on the date that he thought that Jesus had been conceived. Don't know how he came up with that, but that's <laughs> that how it happened. And so he came up with December 25th. Interesting enough, that was also when the winter solstice was. And so the Romans had been celebrating for, uh, and at that time, worshiping the, um, for Saturnarius, but it, for say, uh, Saturn, the planet Saturn. And so they were having a lot of feasting and gift giving and a lot of things like that. And so a lot of people were concerned when the Christians came and took that holiday. Um, so you're saying it was a holiday that people were already doing celebrating something Celebrating from a pagan, which is why some Christians were concerned. And yet that's what's been exciting for over 2,000 years. They, we really have developed so many Christian traditions that point us back to Christ and making him the center of it all. So let's talk about the history of St. Nick. Well, and like the Christmas tree, we have Santa Claus. And so to be able to teach kids and your family about where we came up with Santa Claus. And it came from a wonderful man, St. Nicholas, who was, his parents died and they were wealthy. And so when he grew up, he wanted to share with the poor. So the story is that he would throw coins down the families, um, poor families, chimneys, and sometimes they would land in stockings. And so one particular family had three girls and they came from a poor family so they didn't have a dowry and they couldn't offer anything to a man to be married. So they probably would have had little choice, maybe prostitution, maybe slavery. So he had dropped coins in their stocking and really gave them a future. Wow. So that's where we get the, the idea of hanging the stockings on our chimney. And I don't know if you've seen the gold coins that have chocolate in them. Sure. That's mm -hmm. where that tradition comes from, okay. where those coins and that St. Nicholas. And how long ago was that? Like approximately? That was in the 4th century. So that was 300 years after oh, Christ wow. lived on the okay. earth. And then he became sainted later on because he was a wonderful man. And then other cultures started picking up on this story and changed it a little bit, like mm -hmm. do you do with different cultures do. And then it kind of became melded all together when all of the immigrants from Europe came to the United States. Mm -hmm. And we have took a lot of those different traditions from all of those cultures. But really it was the, the stores and department stores who came up with the idea of Santa Claus. So it's the marketing department. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. The green factory. And it. they wanted to decorate their windows to get people into the stores. And it was fun to decorate with Santa Claus. And then Montgomery Ward, actually in the 1930s, he came up with the idea of the reindeer. And so they kept adding on to the story, the elves and living in the North Pole and making the toys. Oh, and the toys now we have really? the shelf on the elf <laughs> thing. Oh, my gosh. Like, I didn't have any elves or anybody else looking at me. Exactly. I... <laughs> well, that's, that's obviously the commercial adding to the story so they can sell new products. More stuff. <laughs> exactly. And that's really where it, it, Santa Claus came to be in our country. Exactly. It was giving gifts because the stores obviously want the focus of the holiday to be on the giving of the gifts. And then, of course, kids are the ones who wake up on Christmas Day with a lot of gifts. So they want the focus to be on giving gifts to children, which is why it's become the Santa Claus, the reindeer, and all of the fun, magical Well, and like when we said. talk about giving gifts to children, I know that there's a lot of moms that I've spoken to that have said, gosh, you know, it's kind of, can ha it's, it's hard sometimes because can Jesus really compete with Santa Claus when Santa Claus is so fun and bringing all these gifts, etc. And we are going to address that issue when we come back. Christmas is many people's favorite time of year. And of course, our partners at Glory House have wonderful items to help us keep the miraculous in our celebration of the birth of Jesus. Check out the We Believe picture frame and the He Shall Be Called ball ornament, as well as the many other Christmas gift decor items and gifts at www.glorihouse.com. The way that I came up with the theme Christmas, one Christmas I was in the mall, 
uh, trying to decide what in the world I could buy my grandchildren that would be meaningful. It's so commercialized. There were people hustling and bustling everywhere through the mall. Uh, people were grabbing things out of other people's hands. And I just felt like this isn't what Christmas is all about. This isn't the way it should be. So I, I walked out of the mall that day with nothing in my hands and I, I literally had tears streaming down my eyes because I realized that we had to make Christmas at our house different. And so I decided that from this point forward, we would do a biblical theme for Christmas. And our Christmases have changed ever since. Um, just recently, we did a creation theme. Uh, and I used the verse, uh, the very first verse in the Bible, Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and earth. And I did a gift uh, that represented every day of creation. For example, uh, when God created light, everyone opened a package that had sunglasses in it. We went all the way through the days of creation till we got to the end where God rested and everyone got a pair of pajamas and they got tickets to the Creation Museum and uh, we all went together as a family uh, to visit the Creation Museum. Uh, another year we did a hiking theme. And when we did that theme, everyone got hiking hats and hiking shoes. And I booked uh, a trip to the Smoky Mountains. And the entire family, all grandchildren and, and moms and dads, uh, went on a hiking uh, journey uh, through the mountains. And we got to identify all the wonderful things in creation that point to God. And that was just a wonderful uh, memory of Christmas. I make uh, memory books out of every Christmas theme so that the children have a little book to remember that theme by as well. Welcome back. So if you struggle and think that in your house, Santa just really rules and is in competition with Jesus, you've got to hear this next portion. Santa, as celebrated in our culture today, is a fictional figure who brings gifts to kids. Jesus is the most influential person in the history of the world. A new time actually started when Christ was born. B.C. stands for the time before Christ was born, and A.D. stands for in the year of the Lord, in what we're living in now. Santa's arrival is prefaced by decorations in stores and shows on TV. Jesus' birth was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. And Isaiah said this about the Savior he wouldn't ever even meet. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Santa has eight reindeer led by Rudolph and his shiny nose. Jesus has angels who foretold his birth, and those angels still protect us today. Santa flies all night on Christmas Eve to deliver toys. Jesus' mother Mary, who was nine months pregnant, rode 70 miles, a two or three day journey, on a donkey to Bethlehem. Santa lives in the North Pole, which from the Polar Express movie looks like a pretty cool place to live. But Jesus was born in a barn and slept in a feeding trough with animals. Santa and his elves spent all year making gifts for the children of the world. Jesus spent his childhood in the tiny town of Nazareth, born to a teenage mom and a dad who was a carpenter. Santa's fans, little children all over the world, fight crowds and stand in long lines to sit on his lap to tell him what they want for Christmas. Jesus' fans, magi who were the wisest men of their time, traveled on camels for years across the desert to bring gifts to their Savior, who was likely around two years old by the time they got there. Jesus, the Son of God, could have come into the world any way that he wanted. The son of a king and queen, growing up in a castle, living in the most powerful city in the world, eventually becoming a soldier who could seek revenge for his oppressed people. But instead, he came back for one purpose, to die for you and me. Santa will give you gifts, if you're good. Jesus will give you the gift of eternal life, even though your name should be on the naughty list. Wow. There is no competition with that. And even just hearing that, do you think families should even include Santa Claus? Well, when it came time for my husband and I to decide if we were going to incorporate Santa into our family, I thought of what Jesus would want to tell families of today. And I think what he would say is, I'm enough. 
you don't need to add anything more to me. I think he's more than enough. I mean, I know that you're, you're thinking the same thing as well. He is the all-sufficient one. I have to admit that I grew up in a household that we did celebrate traditional Christmas with Santa Claus, and as a child, I loved that. But there was some confusion because we would always go to church on Christmas Eve, and we would have the true meaning of Christmas highlighted. But I know my focus easily got caught up in me and what gifts I was going to receive. But Mostly what we do, I think, as parents is pass on those traditions that we were raised with. So as I raise my children, uh, we also passed on the tradition of Santa Claus. But as I became a born-again believer, I have to say, in retrospect, I'm not in favor of Christians celebrating with Santa as a, a piece of that Christmas pie. And the reason is, and I, I really think this is so important, children get to an age where they look and they think, this Santa was never real. And when Jesus and Santa Claus have kind of come in at the same time into their lives, I think it's a real reason why people have gone, well, if I can't believe Santa Claus and that was a myth, then everything I've heard about Jesus and his birth and who he is as a person, I can't trust that either. Were there other reasons why you didn't want to bring Santa in? Well, what concerns me about Santa is that we are giving him characteristics that only Jesus has. And they are omnipresence, mm -hmm. which is Santa can see you when you're sleeping and mm -hmm. he knows when you're awake and he can't, only Jesus can. And then we're also giving him omniscience, omniscience which is he knows if you've been bad or good. And only Jesus knows that. And then it says, so be good for goodness sake. And we can't be good for goodness sake. Right. We don't deserve gifts. We all deserve coal. We're all on the naughty list. And that's why Jesus came. So I think that's important for us I to stress. I think the other thing, even as you say that, is the whole element of that Jesus knows everything, as you said. And we begin, because as a child, you know you might deserve that coal, but oh, I got all these gifts instead, that we begin to think that there won't be any consequences if we don't honor God and surrender our lives to him. It's like, oh, that whole, everybody's going to go to heaven whether you've been good or bad or whether you've put your trust in God or not. And the Bible's very clear, only those who believe in Jesus will be saved. And so I think we set people up to think it's an all-inclusive. And that's the truth, that only those who believe in Jesus will be saved. And and yet, how does it come across to a child when they look to the parent who's been teaching truth about salvation and eternal life and says, that person I've trusted has lied to me? Yeah. And why often are we lying to the kids? It's because we think it's fun. It's really more for us than it is for them. And so when we come back, we're going to look at how we can continue to make Christ the focus of our Christmas celebration. God's word is life changing. But some people just don't know how to study it, especially when they have a specific issue or need in their life. What if you had this? I want to introduce you to a topic-specific Bible study in a box where you will learn, pray, and conquer life's challenges through this easy-to-use Bible study so you can live victoriously. Through this study, you and your friends and family will receive the life-changing power of God's Word in a simple, effective way. This study contains 52 cards that have a scripture on one side and a prayer relating to that scripture on the reverse side. You can use the study in its entirety or one card at a time in so many different ways. Be inspired during your family devotionals. Your child will be inspired at bedtime. Read a new one each day before work. Or simply send them to friends and family who might need encouragement. The sky's the limit. To order the Bible study in a box, simply visit trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link. Bible study in a box is a great tool for memorizing scriptures and learning to pray effectively. Don't hesitate. Go to trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link at the top of the page to order today your Bible study in a box. Take your faith to a new level and order today. Welcome back. We've got some awesome ideas and ways that we can continue to make Jesus the focus of your Christmas this season. Ladies, take it away. 
<laughs> well, one thing that we started just last year in our family is to do the Advent wreath. And what I really like about this is it starts a month before Christmas and the four Sundays leading up. And so your whole focus of the Christmas season is on Jesus. And you light a candle each week and then you read part of the Christmas story. Mm -hmm. And then the next week you light a second candle, you tell a little bit more. So it kind of gets to the anticipation of the last week, which is Christmas, or the last day is Christmas Day, where you light the Christ candle, which is the white candle in the middle, and talk about all of Jesus as aspects. There's the hope candle, and the joy candle, and the peace candle, and then the Christ candle. So I just really like that. I like to start the season right. with the focus on Jesus. And there's a book. It's $4.99. I wrote it down here. The Family Book of Advent by Carol Garberg. And it gives 25 activities of ways that you can each day talk about the Advent with your kids. I love that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I grew up with an Advent wreath, I have to say. I haven't so much incorporated that into our family, but what we use, and when I say that, I've got grown children now, but what we always did use, and I will trust with my grandchildren that we'll be using, is um, we've got a big booklet, and um, it's got little ornaments, that, but each one of those ornaments, they're like a book, each one is a booklet, and each one has something about the Christmas story. Yes. So we read those the 25 days up till Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so it just, again, makes us right. aware, and they're all based on scripture. Mm -hmm. So it just keeps our focus where it needs to be. Uh, what about the craziness that comes, where you're wanting to buy gifts for this and gifts for that, or I know with my kids, their ages, you know, 9, 11, 13, sometimes I see some of the Christmas lists and I think, are you joking? Whose house have you been raised in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, their, their wants are really just wants, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, well, one idea is to give four gifts something they want. You mean like a car? <laughs> <laughs> Within See. reason, something they need, something they wear, and something to read. So I that's love kind of a that. good, mm -hmm, See, good way to have. Yeah. All right. Something they want, okay. something they need, something to wear, and something to read. I love that. That's, that's a really great a good, idea. good idea. I wish mm -hmm. I'd, I truly wish, again, there are things at my age where I look back and say, I wish I'd implemented so mm -hmm. many of these things because part of the danger is when your children are young, it doesn't cost a whole lot <laughs> for you to get a whole mess of gifts and they wake up and go, wow, and you're going, ah. Oh. And then as they get older and kind of like that car or right. you know that, yeah. that uh, computer or whatever right. it might be, you go, okay. So there is that expense mm -hmm. and we think of how many people go into massive debt. Right. Right. And instead of really enjoying Christmas, it becomes one of those, whoa, now right. I'm it just becomes a stressor, mm -hmm. not just for all the busyness, but going, I can't even enjoy this day because for the next two or three months, I'm going to be paying off the bills. And that certainly is never what God would have no, wanted us. For sure. And I heard a really great story last year about a, a family whose son really wanted um, a new iPad. And they ended up giving it to him like seven days in advance. And some of his friends were like, oh my gosh, did you see that so-and-so got an iPad? It's like a week before Christmas. And when talking to the parent, it was, well, yeah, because we were planning to get that for him anyway. He's been very responsible and it was something that we he, he wanted. But we would prefer to give that big gift early because that's not what Christmas Day is about. That's right. And I think that's and I a thought, great th way. Gosh, I never would have even thought to do that. Right. But what a cool way uh -huh. to try to say, this is exciting to get this, but we're going to give it to you now because that day we really just want to be all about Jesus and not have you be all fired up about, you know, all kinds of stuff. Right. So Well, I think so many of us would really say anymore that we're living in that kind of me generation. Mm -hmm. And the more gifts we're giving, the more we're focusing that and reinforcing people to think it's all about me mm -hmm. instead of it's all about him, that that's our entire purpose of life. Is and about serving others. And yes. we're going to share in just the last few moments that we have on this show. So stay tuned about how to serve others during this great time of year and always. I've been challenging my grandchildren to think about others during Christmas. So we did um, a race around the house. And for every lap that they did, they got a dollar in an envelope that they decorated for Jesus. And uh, at the end of the race, they got to decide how much they wanted to give in the birthday offering to Jesus and how much they wanted to keep for themselves. And I was so blessed because some of my grandchildren gave their entire uh, the sum of money in the birthday gift to Jesus. So that's what we do at Christmas time. It's become something that the children look forward to. They don't know the theme until Christmas Day. 
when they come and we reveal the, th the theme for Christmas. Welcome back. What are some great ways that we can make the story of Christ come alive for our families as well as those in our, in our communities? Well, I think one thing you can do, especially with little kids, is have a nativity that they can actually touch and get to know who the people are and the real story, because every kid can recognize Santa Claus and Rudolph, and so they can recognize Mary and Joseph mm -hmm. and know who they are. And then I also think it's a great idea to go see a live nativity. Yeah. They have those at a lot of churches, and then it really comes alive seeing that, because again, they're seeing all of the shows about Santa Claus right. and Rudolph, and so mm -hmm. this way they're seeing kind of a, a show about I Mary think that's Joseph a great idea. Jesus. And one of the things that my kids, we've got truly, I'm trying to even count how many nativities we have in our house. My husband could probably tell you. Um, but uh, it seems like we you stumble like over them all. But that's right. In the center place, though, it, it's right... Uh, Right in the center of our family room is a nativity set that really is the centerpiece for the entire Christmas um, decorating season. But the one that we as a family love the most is when our kids were younger, we took this clay and we molded them into the nativity set and we shaped so the Joseph, cool. the Mary, the donkey and everything. And I will tell you, that's everybody's favorite one of all time. That's, that's the one that idea. makes our hearts. Another thing that we've done that I just can't tell you has probably been one of the most meaning thing, meaningful things um, that we've done at Christmas. And again, we should probably do this all the time, but we really say make it about others. We've gone and minister to the homeless on the streets. So we go to our Christmas Eve service and um, then we go out and we go to the homeless that are in the bridges. And I live in the Atlanta area, so we've gone and joined with other people to do that and to take them food and to sing Christmas carols with them, but mainly to give the message of Christ to them. Yeah, and there's other ways throughout the Christmas season that we can be, I mean, what a great, it's a great time of year to evangelize. Mm -hmm, and right. I know that some people even do that through letters, like writing their Christmas letter, getting a Christ-centered Christmas card. You think of how huge that list is mm -hmm. and what an opportunity to share your faith and to share just how Christ is the center of your family all year round, not just during that time. That's right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you've gleaned something, as I know I have, to help make Christ the center of Christmas and the center of your life. Thanks for watching True View. If you'd like to connect with us, you can go to trueviewministries.org or check us out on Facebook. Thank you.